Hi, it's Starno with Leo and Recipes. Today, I'm going to be cooking up a whole three pound cut of salmon in the Emeril Lagasse Power Air Fryer 360 XL. And so this is going to be a pretty interesting cook and let's get started on that right now. Okay, so there's a lot to play with in this cook and so I'm going to go through everything and as I always mentioned, nobody paid me anything, nothing sponsored, no association with the companies involved. I just like to do this. And so we have our salmon filet. It's uh, about three pounds. I've got for my seasoning some Old Bay Applewood smoked sea salt and some freshly ground black pepper. I've also got myself a couple of lemons. I've also got myself my I Grill 2 for meat probes. Now because of how long a true three pound salmon is, there's no way you can get the whole thing into this baking pan. You'd have to try and you know cut it and jumble. It, it'd be kind of a, a bit of a chore to try and get it all in the baking pan. So I've got another way that I do to cook this salmon up. And so what I'm gonna do here, I've got two because I ordered an extra crisper trays and I've got these Copper Chef uh, linings, grill mats, and I've got those in there. And so I'm going to put one part of the salmon in one and one in the other, and that way I don't have to try and try and press to fit everything into that smaller baking pan, even though this is the XL model. Still, it's just not enough room in my opinion. So I'm going to go ahead and get these lemons sliced in half and get the salmon, get it just sliced in half and get each half into one of these. So I'm getting my salmon filet out of the pack here. As you can see, you know, it's pretty long. It's a lot of meat. So just gonna cut it here with the knife. You need a good sharp knife. Just cut it like that. Stick that other half right over there like so. And you know both pieces can have a place to set without being too uh, jumbled or press together or anything like that have an overlap. So I'm just going to quickly turn them on to the opposite side while I season them and then I'll flip them back over you know to season the other side. The first thing that I use in my seasonings is the lemon. So basically I'm going to take these lemons and squirt them. Take lemon and squirt on each one. So I'll just take basically a half for each side. You know you can use as much or as little lemon as you choose or prefer. I'm just using you know half of each over them. And now I'm going to take and start seasoning these up with not a lot of Old Bay. I don't want my salmon too spicy but put a little Old Bay on here you know just sprinkle some on because Old Bay goes good with all things from the water. So get this covered over here. I think I got a lemon seed on my salmon there so I'll try and get rid of that little piece of lemon seed. I don't want to eat that with my salmon. I'm going to get some of this uh, applewood smoked sea salt and you know smoked salts kind of give just a mild touch of smoke flavor. It's not going to give you as much as like liquid smoke or something like that. It just gives you a little bit of a smoke flavor. I'm going to take and put some of my Press the ground black pepper on. Put some on the other one here. All right. Got those seasoned up pretty nice. Now I'm just going to flip each of these over real quick and try and make sure that this grill mat stays well centered. I don't want anything, you know, any juices coming out. I want it to stay in. And just flip this one over too. I'm going to go ahead and give this same treatment on this opposite side. Now that they're seasoned, before they go in, I've got to get the Emeril Lagasse Power Air Fryer 360XL set up. So I've got it set to roast now in 355 degrees Fahrenheit. That's what I want to cook at. So it's on roast, 355 degrees Fahrenheit. I've got the time set for 30 minutes because you know it might take the top one maybe 20 minutes, maybe a little more to finish. But I'm going to let the 
I'm going to put them both in together, one on top, the top rack level one and one on level two, just under it. And I'm going to let them cook until the top one is finished. I'm going to be using the eye grill two to gauge that temperature. But I'm going to let the top one finish, then remove it. And then the one that's on the lower rack, I might move it up and then do it. I know I could swap racks halfway through, but I'm not going to be doing that. I'm just going to leave them in until one's done, remove it, and then take care of the other. That's the way I'll do it. And so I'm going to go ahead and hit start and things are preheating. While it's preheating, I'm going to get these iGrill 2 temperature probes in. Probe 2 is for this one that I intend to put on row level 2. Probe 1 is for this one which I intend to put on the upper rack. So just to keep track of which is which. I'm trying to get it deep into the meat. There is an accompanying app for the iGrill 2. I don't plan to use it for this particular cook, but you can use that to like set alarms and all kinds of such for uh, when your meat is near done or done and it'll let you know. And if you look at the referral links in the video description there, one's for the regular Emerald Power Air Fryer 360. Also, there's a link for my Amazon shop and those are referral links also for basically this and other stuff you can get referrals for all types of cooking gear in my Amazon shop. The smoke that you see is just for me cleaning it earlier. I think when I clean it some of the stuff that I, I just use regular uh, dish soap and water and such but it just seems like some of the stuff that I guess maybe I'll wipe on and wipe off just kind of gets a little I guess on there and it just has to burn a little bit off but this won't be a problem it'll go away in a sec as soon as this is done preheating we'll get this salmon in all right we've reached our target temperature and so i'm going to start sliding these on in i'm going to put one right here on level two and put the other up on level one slide it on in trying to make sure that my cord doesn't get in the way or anything all right so I'm going to close up and I'm also going to engage the air fryer fan get some air circulating I'm going to turn that time so it's back to a full 30 minutes but we'll let things count down I see that the one on top is 44 degrees Fahrenheit and get the eye grow closer and the one well the one on the lower level in the middle is 43 degrees so one well now it's 49.50 is the heat going up on it so one's 43 the other one is showing 53 I don't know if I got my uh, maybe I didn't get my meat probe placed well it's moving up kind of fast but we'll just kind of keep things going and keep an eye on things we'll really wait until the top one's done and then we'll take care of that one on the lower level on level two so I'll bring you on back We are just about 29 minutes in. You can hear from the weight of the racks, the fans are making a little noise. Sometimes, depending on the weight of racks and things, the fan might make a little noise, but it's not too bad. But things are at 144 degrees after 29 minutes. We'll just read 145. I'm going to stop here at 29 minutes flat. Things on top are at a solid 145. Have a look at that. That looks delicious. Going to check that temp real quick. And it's hotter on the other end there. I'm going to get this one out since it's done. The lower one, the temperature probe was just way off the chart. I mean, I know it's wrong. It was showing like something in 200s. Definitely had to be misplaced as far as where I put the probe. So I'm going to check that one and it is in the one it's like in the 180s it's done but it's not like 200 or something like that so it's done i'm going to just give it maybe i mean just to get some of that white stuff off i guess i could go longer but then i would you know probably mess my fish up so i'm not going to go longer even though i you know since it was on the lower rack it kind of got this white stuff on it you can avoid this white stuff by like brining well a good brine helps to avoid that when it 
you know, is maybe on the lower rack where it's not going to get well seared off that protein there. But this is the one we want to work with, this one here. So, just going to get myself a plate here and get myself some utensils. I also want to get this, turn this eye grill off and get this meat probe out of this thing. See if I can get that out carefully without possibly burning myself. Let's see. I can get this out of here. Get this from over here. And maybe just gently nudge it out. There we go. Got that out. Alright, so we've got salmon all done. Did the whole filet in one shot. The uh, mats seem to have held well. Things seem to be really non-stick, which these mats are supposed to do. We're going to go ahead and get a slice off of here. So just going to slice a piece using a butter knife because I don't want to mess my mat up. And, you know, fish slice is easy anyway. So, there's our finished fish. Some freshly grilled salmon from the 360 XL. Let's do a taste test. All right, let's get right in here and taste this salmon straight up to see how it is. Hmm, I just need to taste another one just to be sure. All right, moist, juicy, well cooked. That second one I just wanted to taste because it was good. That first one was so good I wanted a second. So it's good stuff. And so, you know, took just under 30 minutes to get, knock out a whole three pound salmon filet, a for real whole salmon filet. And, you know, using that extra crisper pan and the Copper Chef grill mats all worked out great. All worked out great. And so, you know, to get the extra accessories, you got to go on Emerald site to get the extra accessories. There was a, um, that's the only place I know of that sells the extra accessories. But their prices aren't bad for those. And so, you know, you can look that up and you can get those. But everything turned out great. I'm really pleased with the 360 XL's performance. I'm really pleased with, you know, being able to knock out large pieces of food, large things. You know, being able to just go to Costco, get a big pack of a certain type of meat or something. Cook it all up at once, not have to do multiple runs or multiple, you know, cooks and such. Real nice. It's real nice. It's a big cook of this XL, and I like that. So, you can find this recipe and others on my blog at superwaveovenrecipes.com. You can find this YouTube channel anytime by going to waveovenrecipes.com in your web browser. If you are not looking at this in the actual YouTube uh, page and you want referral links, you can basically look in the YouTube video description for the referral links and such. Also, I have, if you're on my blog, superwaveofrecipes.com watching this, they're below in the video, well, in the lower part of the video here. If you're watching this on some other site, don't use their link because that's not me. But uh, some people like to borrow my videos to try and use their own referral links. Anyway, use mine, help this channel. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Share the video with a friend, leave your comments, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and good eating.